People don't come here because they believe Morgan's not coming home. The people that show up are the people that believe, and so it's awesome. A smile like that is rare these days for Colleen Nick. What she would like most on her daughter's seventh birthday is to see her yeah. and know she's alive and well. It's a wish shared by hundreds of friends who, with the release of bright pink balloons, helped transform this baseball field of bad dreams into an upbeat, hopeful birthday celebration. Spirits are real good right now, you know. It's been a rough weekend. Yesterday was rough and day was rough till we got here. And uh, got here, seen all the people, seen all the balloons. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really helped. It's really, really brought us up. And a present did arrive for the Knicks. A message from police in Arizona that a young girl fitting Morgan's description was seen Sunday night in a Payson restaurant just north of Phoenix. Police believe this lead is so strong they're putting out a media alert. This photograph was shown to our witnesses at the restaurant. They have positively identified Morgan as being the little girl in the restaurant. Her hair was cut short. It was blunt cut as if somebody had whacked it off with a pair of scissors because her hair is much, was much longer when she was abducted. The um, suspect matched the description of the one that abducted Morgan in Arkansas, and the vehicle matched as far as color and having Arkansas plates. More than 1,000 people joined hands tonight and prayed for a little girl named Morgan Nick. One year ago today, a stranger kidnapped the six-year-old girl from a baseball field in Alma. She has not been seen since want to ask everyone to continue to have faith, to be faithful, and to continue to believe and have faith that Morgan will be returned home safely. Tonight's Believe for Morgan rally is truly about believing. So many here tonight have faith that Morgan's alive. Many believe because Morgan's mother does. We're here to stand on our faith and our hope and believe for Morgan and show the world that we're going to fight for her, and we're going to bring her home, and we're going to end this nightmare because she doesn't deserve this. Colleen has made America familiar with Morgan's story. She told it at the White House and on the Oprah show. Her courage is overwhelming. I don't care what the odds are, and I do not care what the statistics are because Morgan will come home. I believe in a mighty and powerful and awesome God. And I believe from day one that he has protected her. And I know there are a lot of children that are taken and that are not recovered alive. But I tell you what, we're just going to be different. That stop block turn red. Go to the very next stop block. Just one block. It's just not a time to crucify somebody before we know anything. I obtained an attorney the other day, just, mm -hmm. and I heard him being interviewed about it, and it's probably the smartest thing he could do under the circumstances. We should be right here. Perhaps more than ever, our Kansans are worrying about what may have happened to Morgan Nick on June the 9th, 1995. In an affidavit just released, police say a 36-year-old deaf man from Crawford County was videotaped saying he remembers going to the Little League ball field in Alma. He then remembers raping Morgan Nick, waking up with blood on his clothes, then burning the bloody clothes after hearing about the abduction on the news the next day. The document went on to say that the suspect, quote, felt that I did it, unquote, referring to Morgan Nick. The six-year-old girl was last seen emptying sand from her shoe at this Alma ballpark. Now police may have found the first evidence of her existence since that day. Twenty-two items were seized from the suspect's home and vehicle. Among them, a pink toothbrush, a knife, a wood chisel, one long reddish blonde hair, a roll of duct tape with hair fibers, and several items with dark reddish stains. They've all been sent to the FBI for evaluation, and until those results are released, Alma Police Chief Russell White says no charges will be filed and the suspect will be able to walk free. For now, Morgan's family and church family is still hoping there is the chance their little girl will still come home.
Yeah. New fur tree. Yep. <laughs> Till daddy's little girl. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me what kind of contact you've had with the FBI? We've been in contact with them weekly. Uh, we've talked to them a couple of times this week. Uh, we're no closer than what we were, or we may be closer, but we haven't gained more results than we had the very first week. Um, talking to them, you know, we anticipate that they'll begin on it pretty soon, we hope. Uh, we still don't know how long that'll take after they begin. Depends on the amount of evidence, the number of fibers and things like that. So did they give you any kind of time frame at all? No, they haven't. Haven't got any time frame at this point. You know, we're a few weeks closer than what we were, obviously, but we still don't know when that'll be. Um, what kind of, have you gone back out to his house and done any more searching or have no. you talked to him at all? No, we haven't been back out to his house. Uh, we have not talked to him. Have been in touch with uh, his attorney at one point, but uh, we haven't uh, spoken to him at all. So you haven't moved any, are you trying to set up an interview or sometime where you can interview no, him? No, we probably won't attempt to do that. Unless something else comes up, I uh, probably won't attempt to do anything like that until uh, after we have the results from the lab. Um, has he had any backlash from the public? Well, you know, I can't any, really say it. I haven't no, talked to him. Nothing so. criminal that you've been Right. No, we anything. haven't had any complaints from the family or him about other people. Uh, no, we, don't, we haven't had any contact with him, so we really don't know. Um, I had been told that he worked at the Stepping Stone School. Did Morgan have any connection to that school or anything? Not that I'm aware of, no. How has, what's the general feeling in the community? I mean, it's been a couple of weeks and people are wanting some, to know something. And yeah, well, I mean, I think some people are frustrated that obviously it takes that long. But again, you know, we, we sent it to them knowing that it would take a while. Uh, but we also felt like they were the, the best avenue for the segments, you know, that we'd get the, the best results. Uh, you know, it's the premier lab in the country, and that's you know, why we want it. What's the most time we could be looking at? Six uh, months? I don't know. I hope it's not that long. Uh, it could be that long. Um, what's the most important thing I love doing? Oh, I guess, I mean, do you, do you keep an eye on him? What if, no, I know he, you don't, you told me you didn't. Right, no, he's on bond. Uh, he's he's, he's on bond. He, I mean, I'm sorry, he's out. Oh, he's free. He's not on bond. <laughs> I'm like, you what are you talking about? Okay. No, he's free to do as he wants. Uh, you know, we there's no hold. He doesn't have to report to us or anything like that. Uh, he's free to go and come as he pleases. Does that not concern other people in the community? Well, I'm sure it does. Uh, but, you know, that's our legal system, and that's the way it's set up. And it's, you know, it's supposed to be equal for everybody. And, you know, we have no reason to hold this man at this point. So, He's free to come and do as he pleases. What about um, other leads? Has this been a big blocker to other leads coming in? Have they slowed down considerably since this came in? Initially, a little bit, but no, not too bad. We're, we're still getting a few leads. Uh, you know, they're a little slow right now. I, I can't say whether it's from this or if it's just one of those times. I mean, we've had periods when they've slowed down at times. Uh, we're not getting a whole lot in the last couple of weeks, but. Until you know, we get further down the road, I won't be able to be able to tell you what's from this or something else. Okay, so do we need to do that again because of the train? We do. Okay. Well, can we cut out that bond part? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry okay. About that. Oh, that's okay. I won't use that part. That's good. Okay. Tell me about the leads, though, because I know one of the one of Pauline's concerns at that press conference was that she didn't want people to stop looking for Morgan. Right. We've had, you know, our leads have got slower. Uh, I don't know that it's from this. We've had periods when the leads have slowed down. Uh, we won't know until we get further on down the road whether you know it actually occurred because of this or just a, a natural slump. You know, we've had times when leads were slow. Do you have a gut feeling about this? I mean, I know this is your case, but and you've been working it for a long time. You know, I to tell you I didn't would be a, would be a lie, but. You know, I, I really can't express those. I try to keep those out of these, you know, try to deal with the facts. What about all those rumors? Are they still running around that, you know, she's buried somewhere and you guys have dug up her body and all that stuff? I mean, no, not too bad. That's slowed down some. Um, any backlash from the guy that, that ended up giving you guys the tape? Not His that friend? I'm aware Nothing, of, no. Nothing's happened there. That was some concern. Not that I'm aware of. Anything else?
anything else you can think of? It's windy. It is windy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about you, Casey? No, he wouldn't have heard it die. Well. Yeah, because as soon as you called, I called them to just see who was dispatching today. <laughs> He'll be I'm real sure be upset back. when he hears. <laughs> I thought for sure. I thought, well, because the two no. guys walked by that truck, Casey, I thought that might have been one of them. But no. Okay. Well, as, as you know, there's really nothing new, but, um, or as we know, um, and it's been about a month since, since we last talked to you and since all the stuff came up. Um, what are you, what's going on day to day? Right, I talk to him all the time, but really um, nothing else has developed on this case right now. We're still waiting for everything to come back from the game. Um, you know, for us, it's uh, life goes on. I don't know, not life goes on as normal is probably not the right word, but, um, you know, we're still looking for Morgan, and just because we have this suspect or um, some possible evidence, doesn't stop what we're doing. You know, we're still looking for Morgan, and so that's what we're still doing every day is, is the same thing we were doing before. But she said that it's kind of either, either maybe the training or the surfacing of this possible suspect has maybe impacted the leads and that you haven't gotten as many. Well, um, and I, I think that was partially because everybody took a, such a big interest and the media got real involved, and everybody would like to think that this is over and that we have you know, the big bad kidnapper in jail, that means everybody's safe and there's not a predator roaming our streets. And if everybody can think that this is our guy, that means they're safe, but the problem is it stops the leads. And Morgan's not home, so we can't let the leads stop. Even if this is our kidnapper, even if this is our suspect, the leads can't stop because Morgan's not home. Aren't you kind of frustrated that it's taking so long? I mean, you've got to be frustrated that that what in the particular FBI. this whole two the, years well, I mean, everything in general but just that, um, I mean, so you would know I, way. I, I don't I don't know because I think you know because we've had two and a half years of this um, what we do I really think what I do is I just stay focused on the goal which is finding Morgan and I know that they're gonna do their job and they're gonna get it back to us as quickly as possible and when they do then we'll know I think maybe um, I mean maybe I'm not as anxious as everybody else because I, I still believe in my heart that Morgan is alive, and if this guy did what he says he did, then that would lead everybody to believe that Morgan is not alive. So um, I tend to think he's maybe not even involved. Mm -hmm. um, That's what I was going to ask you. I mean, when you, I mean, when you've got uh, you know, every mother has that said instinct, mm -hmm. and and everyone in the community has known about him. We've never said his name, but did you feel like this? when his name surfaced and all this stuff came out, did you feel like this could really be it, or did you, or do you feel kind of basically that you know? Well, you know, I still feel like Morgan's alive. I was up in Minnesota over the weekend. We were doing um, a kickoff fundraiser for another foundation, and there were several parents there whose children were either still missing or who have been recovered. And, and we were talking about how you, you get that, and it's unexplainable. You just get that in your heart, and you know, and you can talk to parents whose child um, will eventually be recovered or be found deceased, and there's just something in them, even if they're saying to you, you know, I believe my child can come home alive, there's just something there that you can tell that they don't really believe it or they don't really feel it. And there's some parents that will tell you from the start that they don't think that their child is coming home alive, and it, that's how it always turns out. And there are other parents who have just felt it in their heart from the beginning, and, and their kids have come home alive. And it's something that I've, ne I've never thought Morgan was dead. You know, I've questioned it, and I've um, dug deep into my soul, and I don't believe she is. I truly don't. So. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you feel like that. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's like, I mean, you're, you're the leader. Well, you know, somebody else told me that the other day. They said, you know, but the more you talk to people and tell them that Morgan, that you believe Morgan's alive, it like increases their hope and their faith, mm -hmm. which to me, I, I don't understand that, but I believe it with all my heart. So, I mean, in my own mind, I'm saying to myself, well, if this guy took Morgan, then maybe he took her, but I don't believe he killed her. I don't believe it, not for, not for two seconds, not for two seconds. Has the community, I guess, atmosphere changed in the last month since all this happened? Do you think? I mean, do people, I guess he's in the hospital now, so people don't blame him. Um, or I don't know, I mean, they're, they're not seeing him in public. Oh, I don't know about yeah. any of that. I don't know any about that. Mm -mm. What, what about, um, what do we, have they given you any time frame for your test? No, just the same thing that they said at the beginning. So, yeah, it could take a really long time. So, you know, I think initially that was a little bit hard to swallow, but um, I want it done right. You don't want evidence lost or done incorrectly so that later it's questionable. Uh, if, if this guy had anything to do with Morgan's kidnapping, I want the evidence so tight that, you know, he can't get away from it. And if he didn't have anything to do with it, I also want the same kind of evidence so it shows very clearly that it wasn't him and we can get on with the investigation and find Morgan. What, what are, I know you travel around and you do all these things. Can you kind of explain to the public what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? <laughs> I know you do everything, but I have no idea. in a brief synopsis. I, I don't know. That is really, really hard to do. Um, you know, we do a lot of community education um, with our teenagers, with our little kids, with the parents. Um, we have do safety seminars and fingerprint clinics. I also travel and work with the Justice Department doing law enforcement training. Um, and we have a new grant with the state of Arkansas to do a, um, a project called Project HOPE to work with families of missing children, whether they're runaways or family or stranger abducted children, to provide emotional support um, while their child is missing and after their child comes home. So we're busy. And like a doctor of judges has given you a way to change it has. the world. It has. It has. Um, we, we can make a difference for the children, but we have to get involved and we have to do it. You know, everybody can make a difference, but you, you have to stay involved. Have you read um, John Walsh's new book? No. You, you need to read that. Read oh, my gosh. It's incredible. You can take his book and change, um, like says with all these parents this weekend, you could change the name and the missing circumstances for Adam, and, and it fits every family. It's amazing how he managed to capture all the emotion that you go through when you lose your child, that he was actually able to get that done on paper. You should read it, it's incredible. You seem pretty, pretty um, I mean, not at peace, but just really in control of the situation. Um, I have my moments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the day that they came to tell me about this guy, the suspect, um, you know, Russell and Mike, they called me at seven o'clock in the morning, said, you know, there's something we need to talk to you about. And I said, fine, you know, I'll drop the kids off at school, I'll be down. And he said, no, we really need to come by the house and talk to you. So immediately my heart, I couldn't breathe. My heart stopped. It's like, I mean, it was pounding. I took the kids over to my neighbors because I knew they don't come to my house if, you know, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. And, um, you know, emotionally I, I wasn't in real good shape then. But I, I've, if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. If we sit around and we're so upset and we cry all the time and nobody can get anything done, then we're not doing the best job that we can for Morgan. So can you tell me where we are today? Are we any closer than we were yesterday? No, we're pretty much where we were at. Uh, you know, we're just really at this point, unless something breaks, uh, we're waiting for the forensics to come back, so we don't have anything more today. Now, they, I've been told it could take days or months. Is that, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, we really don't know how long it'll take. Some of it's dependent on the caseload. Uh, we do feel like we'll get a preliminary report uh, prior to the final report, but we, we feel like it's probably be months before we have a final report. How long to the preliminary? Don't really know. It's a guess, and uh, it's not one that I'd be very good at guessing at, probably. It, we're still looking at probably several weeks or months on that. Are you in contact with the people at the FBI every day on, you know, like checking on where they are? Or? Well, we're working with the FBI on the case, naturally. So the local agents that's working on it, assigned to it, we talk to pretty regular, and uh, we have not been in contact with the lab. Uh, you know, we leave that up to the agents we're working with to do that. Have you been in contact with them with this person? I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, we have not. 
um, the benefits are anything too. No, we, we haven't tried to initiate any kind of contact uh, and probably won't until we have some more information. Um, how is the community reacting to all this? I mean, are they, is there like kind of a... Well, you know, it's, it's I know a lot hard of people are saying say. that they're upset that there isn't an arrest right. if, there's, if there's been a supposed confession. Well, and I, I don't know, to be honest. I haven't had that feedback, uh, you know, and, of course, it may be going on, and I'm just not aware of it. I, I know people would like to see this case come to an end. I don't think anybody in our community would like to see us arrest an innocent man, so uh, you know, that's where we're at at this point. Along that same line, I, I, just having heard uh, Colleen's comment yesterday about public speculation and, and her kids having to put up with that and things like that, is there a lot of that kind of talk going around? I mean, that you're aware of what, what, well, yeah, what there's, do you see? There's a lot of people talking about the case. I mean, uh, you know, it's a small community. Uh, everybody knows everybody. Uh, it's on TV. You know, they see it. They read about it. So they talk about it. Uh, you, to how much speculation they do on their own or the rumors, I don't really know. I'm kind of closed within my circle, but I do know there is some. We hear several of the rumors. Hopefully, some of that has, you know, uh, dissipated a little with with you know getting the facts out. I bet there's always going to be rumors, and we don't have any way to control those. So. Okay. Okay. So what do you what do you think about this this latest suspect and well, the possibility of him being the one that did it? He probably did, you know. Huh? It, it seems like that uh, he's got a lot of the information that you know they would need. Uh, I don't know why he would confess to it and then change his story. Uh, it seems like a long time that you know if it was on his conscience that he would uh, uh, just finally decide to say something. Though it don't, that don't sound right, but I don't know. Do most uh, people in the town think that he, you know, if, if he has someone confessed to it, that they should arrest him? Uh, everybody, everybody I've talked to, you know, said that they should have kept him. Because, you know, with that kind of evidence, you know, they, they, they just should have kept him in jail. You know, so he could, you know, leave at any minute. Uh, but, uh, Are people upset that it, that it might possibly be one of their own here in the community? Uh, I don't think so. I've always thought it would be somebody around here that uh, done it. Uh, very seldom somebody would come in from somewhere else, you know, unless it was a transit or something coming through, and that's you know highly unlikely. Uh, I think this gentleman has been in trouble before with the law over some little kids. I'm not real sure what exactly happened, but there were some little kids involved in, in one of his altercations. Well, I, I really don't understand why they let him go. But they did. <laughs> Well, like I said, first and foremost, I think they ought to respect the family's wishes, uh, concern and, you know, being kind of left alone and, and kind of keep a low profile about the whole situation until somebody has some, you know, real proof on the whole thing. And as far as identifying the man, I don't think that would help anything and, and it's not going to help the family because, uh, until they can prove something, but I think they ought to make more of an effort to prove something. Those people have lived this hell for two and a half years. It's time someone helped them out and, and uh, tried to, you know, get some real proof here. If this is the man, then they need to go ahead and do something instead of just letting him go free or whatever, because nobody knows what he's going to do. And it's just a sad situation, but like, Again, I think, you know, leave the family alone. They, they live through enough without, you know, adding to their misery with rumors and, and all this attention. They don't need it. They don't need it. But they need to know. They need to know something. Whatever it takes, you know, and a lot sooner than any months from now. I don't know what their problem is, but uh, it just seems to me like it should have a little bit more priority. You know, I mean, I couldn't be as kind as she is about the situation, but I mean, you know, I guess she just has more <laughs> patience or or whatever than I do. I, I just couldn't handle it if it were me. 
Six-year-old Morgan Nick may be missing, but the Ozark girl's memory fills the minds of those across the state looking for her and her captor. Amid the pink ribbons and thousands of flyers, the FBI announced this week they're bringing in a powerful computer to help in the search. You know, I don't know how you can protect them any more than I did. Colleen Nick says she's always been accused of being an overprotective mother, and that makes it more difficult for her to understand how somebody was able to snatch her six-year-old daughter Morgan from a Little League baseball field in Alma. Morgan disappeared late Friday night. No one's seen or heard from her since. How many times have you walked past the store window and looked at a flyer and thought, that poor family, now I hope they find the child, you know? I will never walk past one again without my heart stopping. Friends and family members have plastered Morgan's picture and a picture of her suspected abductor in just about every window in Crawford County and the surrounding communities. They've tied pink ribbons to her home in Ozark as a symbol of hope that Morgan will return safely. The color chosen because it's Morgan's favorite. The blonde hair, blue eyed girl is four feet tall, weighs 55 pounds. She was last seen wearing a Girl Scout t-shirt and blue denim shorts. Authorities are working against the clock, but they say they haven't given up hope. We don't want to say the chances are going to decrease, but I will say that, that uh, she is in, in more danger as time lapses. We just praying, praying that uh, we find her safely, uh, looking every nook and cranny and down every dirt road and back road and what have you that we can think to go through, um, just trying to be there for her. Morgan's suspected kidnapper is a white man about six feet tall with a medium build. He has black and gray hair, possibly a mustache and beard. Authorities are interested in not only finding Morgan, but catching her alleged abductor as well. They say he may be the same man accused of two other attempted kidnappings in this western Arkansas area during the past three days. They say he may continue committing offenses until he's captured. Reporting from Alma, I'm Deborah Takahara for Channel 7 News. The increased number. Just to catch up on leads, uh, right now our leads are somewhere over uh, 1,600 to 1,700 uh, investigative leads to cover. Uh, of course, we've got a backlog. We can't cover them uh, that fast. We're anticipating maybe some things to increase that number, and we just need to catch up on them. This is where the nightmare began Friday night, at a baseball field a block from the Alma Police Department. Colleen Nick turned her back on her six-year-old daughter for just several moments. When she turned around, Morgan was gone. Was he driving a car or a vehicle? Hundreds of leads are called into the police station each day. Police are pursuing as many as possible. One woman who allegedly witnessed the abduction was hypnotized, but even she has not led police any closer to catching their only suspect. A man described in his mid to late 30s with dark brown and gray hair about six feet tall. Somewhere out there are people that know the individual and it's just trying to get the right information from the general public and law enforcement before we can identify the person. Pink ribbons are a constant reminder of Morgan's abduction at the baseball field, along the streets, and on people's clothes. Though pink is a color of innocence, this community seems to have lost some of its own. Some periods during the day you're more hopeful that she'll turn up any minute. And, you know, some periods of the day it's hard to stay hopeful. Among the many leads police have followed up on are tips that a man fitting the suspect's description has been seen in Van Buren County. So far, those leads have turned up empty. A reward of $7,500 is also being offered by Alma businesses. Hopefully, the case will come to a quick close now that the reward is being offered. Lauren Glassberg, Channel 7 News. Renewed search efforts in a decades-old missing persons case turning up nothing once again for the family of Morgan Nick. Crews had been searching a property in eastern Oklahoma since yesterday, and that's where we find Channel 7's Matt Mershon with the latest from authorities. Matt? Well, good evening, Alicia. Crews have spent the better part of this afternoon filling in the hole in this backyard they've been digging since Monday. That dig for evidence acting on information unrelated to the Morgan Nick case, but on a property that investigators had searched nearly seven years ago in relation to Morgan Nick's disappearance. 
Agents with the FBI, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, local law enforcement, as well as investigators from Arkansas were on scene in Spyro, Oklahoma Tuesday. Authorities here searching a property searched in the Morgan Nick case back in 2010. It's not a cold case. A lot of people refer to it. It's an old case, but not cold. We, we still get leads all the time on it. Uh, we're working them constantly. When officials initially searched this property, authorities only had a search warrant for a home on the property. That home belonging to a person of interest in the Morgan Nick case since the investigation started back in 1995. The home no longer exists and the person of interest is currently incarcerated. We've never been able to, to tie him to directly to it and we've never been able to clear him from it. Crews were reportedly searching for a well on the property in relation to another investigation. Uh, that dig was done about an, an inch or two at a time with the soil drug back and then that way it, the, the uh, forensic pathologist from the state medical examiner's office could thoroughly look at everything that was being moved. They dug roughly two feet before hitting bedrock. No well and no Morgan Nick. I'm 100% confident that there's no evidence there in that location. And tonight, reaction from Morgan Nick's mother, Colleen, after finding out nothing had been found here. She says, quote, she's never given up hope that Morgan is out there waiting to be found. She says she'll continue to fight for Morgan's return home. For now, we are in Spyro, Oklahoma. We'll send it back to you, Alicia. Still keeping hope alive. Thanks, Matt. Six-year-old Morgan Nick was reported missing in 1995 after being abducted from the Alma Little League Baseball Park. Today we've learned new developments have come to light in the 1995 disappearance of Morgan Nick. Six-year-old Morgan Nick and her mother Colleen were enjoying a baseball game in Alma on June 9, 1995. Morgan and other children at the park ran across a field catching fireflies. And moments later, Morgan disappeared. In December of 2017, authorities in Oklahoma searched an area in Spyro, hoping to find information leading to further developments in Morgan's case, but their search was unsuccessful. And just last year, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released a new age progression photo of what Morgan might look like at the age of 31. Well, that brings us to today, when for the first time a person of interest was named in the Morgan Nick disappearance. And while he died more than two decades ago, Morgan's mother, Colleen, is not giving up hope her daughter will come home. She spoke today with Channel 7's Paris Kane. Until someone can tell me that Morgan did not survive, then I'm going to fight every day for her to come home. It's been 26 years and five months to the day since Colleen Nick last saw her daughter. And she loved cats. Uh, she loved apples. She thought that bubble gum was a food group. You know, she was a first grader with her whole life in front of her. Morgan was six years old when she was last seen at a Little League game in Alma, doing what kids do, playing, chasing fireflies, chasing dreams. Morgan, um, at six years old, her, uh, her dream was to grow up to be a circus performer and a doctor. The last thing that anyone expected was that someone was also chasing Morgan. And in an instant, she was gone. There's a, a tremendous amount of truth and hope and encouragement in the fact that when Morgan was taken, the state of Arkansas stood up. 26 years later, Colleen says the same agencies, friends, and strangers that stood up then still stand with them today. People really just pulled Morgan into their hearts, you know, made her part of their families. And all these people are still fighting for Morgan with us. Over the years, Colleen says law enforcement has chased down countless leads. And she urges anyone with any information about Morgan or any missing or endangered child to speak up. It might be hard to spot a child who's missing, but it's not hard for any of us to spot a child in trouble. And what we do with that could change the course of the child's life. Right now, the FBI is asking for the public's help. They want information on Billy Jack Lynx, a man who was arrested two months after she disappeared for the attempted abduction of a young girl in Van Buren County. 
Just eight miles away from the same baseball fields, Morgan was last seen. When you commit an offense against a child, you've done it before and you'll do it again. Links died in prison in 2000, and the FBI wants anyone who knew him to give them a call. It could be the information that brings Morgan home to us. Now, if she were to come across this, what would you want to say to her? Hmm. I would say, you know, Morgan, um, it's okay if you forgot about us or if you're not sure who you are, but we have never forgotten about you. Um, we are still fighting for you. Um, we have an army of people fighting for you, and we are coming to get you. Paris Kane, Channel 7 News. If you know anything about Billy Jack Lynx, literally any information about him or his life, the FBI says no detail is too small. They want you to call them at 1-800-CALL-FBI. And if anyone has any information about Morgan or her whereabouts, call the Alma Police Department or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Their number is 1-800-THE-LOST.